Hey everybody, Trevor from Just Enough Design here. I just released a article about a nifty little design trick. I like to call it the gradient cutout. So as you can see on my screen here, this is just a matter of taking a one central type of gradient, one color to the other, and then taking a box of that really, and then duplicating that just on top. What's kind of nice about it is it allows you to play with the various transparencies and then whatever's sitting on top gets that extra prominence, that extra contrast, that extra drama so it really stands out. But because you're using the exact same gradient, as opposed to just a flat color or anything else, it keeps that same line, that same flow, which makes it really kind of interesting. Uh, and more than that too, in, in so creating, you actually discover and find a lot of nifty little tricks that you can reuse in Canva, as well as other design applications or office applications, websites, wherever you'd like to do it. So I wanted to, besides just the article release here, I wanted to do a quick live video and walk through and see if I can't recreate it and really dig into some of the steps I use to create this so that you can create it too. Now, now yeah, so, so first to mention here, it's just at the website. If you'd like to read through and kind of see the step-by-steps with images, um, everything's laid out here. I've taken screenshots throughout to try to really show how it's done. So if you want kind of a more self-paced as opposed to video, definitely check it out. Now you'll see as part of the um, part of the steps, I use these shadow images. Now Canva, I find thus far doesn't have really great shadow support. So uh, what I've done is I've actually put together a really great little freebie. It is just a pack of about twelve or so shadows and one so full shadows, just full boxes that are nicely uh, faded out as it goes, as well as cropped ones. So you could just like tuck it up underneath of a box and kind of catch the effect there. So uh, feel free to grab it. It's linked in the article as well as I'll also put it into the link of this video. So super useful. You'll be able to use it across all the elements in Canva as well as any other design element or design applications you're using, including Word, PowerPoint on your website, wherever you like it. So definitely give it a consideration. So uh, same style as far as what I'm calling the gradient cutout, but obviously a different uh, look and feel, different color. So this is what we're going to try to recreate live, and hopefully I do it. Otherwise, it'll be a bit embarrassing, but we'll get there. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll create a brand new design. So one of my favorite things with the live designs here is I tend to fumble. I tend to uh, <laughs> mix up a few things here and there, but in so doing, kind of learn. And I think... You know, one, one thing I really like to espouse to people is just don't fear the design software. You know, you control Z or command Z works and you can just always go back. So play around with it, get your hands dirty. You know, creativity is really spurned from a open, calm mind state. So, you know, do your best not to be worried about it. Just undo even quote unquote pros like myself mess up. So don't worry about it. So let's start off. So we're going to just add a photo into the background. Uh, let's just look up plants. Now the photo in the example is actually one I'd uploaded, but we'll just find a really nice one to use. Uh, some really cool ones here. Let's go with um, kind of like the, just hoping for some white, dark contrast. Kind of like, this one kind of looks interesting. Let's drag that into the back. Let's make it big to increase the drama. There we go. So that's our first start. So background image of whatever you like, whatever is on theme. And it's interesting with this because the it's, a, it's very much a background image. It's meant to fade into the background and not have prominence, but you're establishing um, you know, a feeling, a mood with it so whatever it is that you're doing as much as this image will be obscured and in the background you want it to feed in the overall type of messaging of what you're putting together it's important to remember now this point so the first step here we got a great photo looks nice it's a little faded when i zoomed it in so i might want to find a different one Let's go with that one. I like that. Okay, so now we'll head over to graphics, and we're going to be looking searching for a gradient. Uh, the Canvas search feature it's super fast. I, even if I know where something is, I tend to just type it and use it as it seems to get me where I need to go so much quicker. So we'll type in a gradient, and we're going to stack this on top of 
this plant. So this one looks nice. Very good. Now we're going to go ahead and stretch it so it takes up the entire screen. And we need a bit more of a green type of theme. Uh, now, if you have brand colors that you know are good, of course, use those guys instead. I'm just going to use some of the defaults. I might make it a little darker. Now let's start there, see where we get to with that. Oh, one good tip, too, with that kind of color thing, just quickly save a bit of time. I want a green, but I want to make this one a little darker. Start by selecting it and then come up to the plus. It gets it starts you at the green you just selected. So that way, at least you're starting with purple, orange, green, whatever you want. Yeah, I want that a little darker like that. Again, just kind of create that drama, which I like. Very good. Now, I'm going to take that. We're going to reduce the opacity, the transparency. Now, you want it. You don't want it to be, you know, so light that it's inconsequential, as in it's almost like a mistake that it's kind of green, but you don't want it so thick that it's really hard to see anything. So somewhere in between, you can definitely see something, but it's going to soften its appearance. So it's not going to interact as much with the front elements. I think that one looks good. So now here, here's the first step of this. So, so this looks good. Uh, what I want to do is I want to keep this same gradient and then but create a new box I can put content on top of. Now, if I just control and paste, just shrink this. Let me hold also goes in. See, now that's not bad, but you notice that the colors don't quite match, right? It's it kind of fights against the background. You can because the lightest part is in the corner, lightest parts in the corner. So to alleviate that, just for this now this this is fine. That's really good. You can even have it as a solid color and still kind of achieve a good effect of this. For the particular one I'm trying to do, I'm trying to make it as if I'm cutting out this piece right here and just making this one more opaque. So to do that, what I'm going to do is have it take up the entire mount. And as opposed to making it smaller, I'm going to crop it. Now, what this does is this is going to keep the gradient exactly the same as it is in the background. So it's going to like practically disappear, right? So, so now it's a little bit closer. Now it's obviously because it's doubling from the transparency, actually a good way to show that perhaps. Yeah, so if I, if I make the background full transparency, you can't even see this element because it's perfectly aligned with the gradient. But the trick we're working on is to, because this one's at about 80. See, that, it's kind of cool, right? <laughs> Where you drag it down, you slowly kind of see it appear as if it's popping out already. So let's get this up to an 80 and keep it going. Now this one, I think, we'll keep with 80 so far. I think that'll give us enough contrast when we put text on top of it. Shouldn't be an issue. Now, the images, the, sh the shadow, I should say. The So I've uploaded one of my shadows here. There's two ways to go about this. In the shadow pack I mentioned, there's ones that are already cropped. So what that would mean is that there's a shadow that will just snap onto the bottom here, and you don't have to do any kind of extra mucking around. It's just going to work nice. In the design that I wanted to achieve, though, it actually had some shadow on the outsides. So here's how we're going to achieve that. So first, we're going to just click the shadow in. Uh, looks like it's a little bit wider than longer, so I'm going to just match it up there. And I'm going to make it big enough so it would spill out over the edges. I, you know, as a designer, you, you kind of grow tendencies in some ways. I always like having it down below it. Uh, certainly not a requirement. You can have the shadow to the left, right, up, down, whatever suits your design, of course. Uh, but I'm going to put that like that, so as if it's uh, the, the light is coming from the top and it looks like it's kind of coming upwards. And then we're going to want to send it to back. Now what's good is you can go up to position here and just hit backwards. That works great. But I've also found if you just right click, you have all the action items right there just really fast, just saving you some mouse movements. Precious, precious seconds. So we'll send backward. Now it's behind. Now you can see the issue here where right now I can see through, I can see the shadow. So that's not what we want. Well, so we're go what we're gonna wanna do is make the green fully opaque. And then we're gonna wanna group these two things. 
So I'll grab the both and you either hit group, you right click and hit group, or you can actually keyboard shortcut, just like all of your favorite programs, uh, control or command G. And now it's a group. So the cool thing here is now when we do the transparency, it does it as a group as opposed to just the individual elements, or in this case, previously, the green square above the shadow. So you'd be seeing it. Instead, it's one unit all together. So when we make it transparent, it goes together. So you can see that kind of, you can decide on just how bold you want it to go. So let's keep it at about the let's say 82 there. Kind of get that nice shadow fine. But when you look, again, like the, the impressive thing there is when you look through, it's super clean. You can kind of see into the background, but that's obscured enough that when we start adding text, it's going to be looking great. So on the previous one, I had a border. So let's go ahead and do that now. I wasn't the largest fan of some of these borders, honestly, but um, you could really just take a uh, line itself and reshape it and kind of get where you want. But uh, kind of for expedience sake, I'm just going to grab this guy here. Fairly nice. Make sure that the spacing is the same above and below. Um, if you really want to be uh, specific about it, as I've taught in other videos, if it's not lining up for you, just add a square and measure it, right? And then I'm pressing Alt so I can duplicate it. You can copy and paste it, or just you're basically just looking to get that same square. You could move the same square too. You don't really need to keep it there. This way too, now when you're moving it, it's going to snap to where you want it. So let's move this guy over here. Let's see, is that touching the edge? Nope. Not. Okay, so you can see now I was wrong. All my training, <laughs> it still wasn't quite touching. So that makes it even there. And let's get to the bottom. There we are. Perfect. So now it's all evenly spaced. So the little square trick, I like to call it, one of my favorites. Now this, let's go ahead and make the color white so it stands out. Now in addition, I don't, for this border, I want it to be kind of just a softer version of it. I could go into the colors and try to figure out the right green. Uh, one of the quicker ways I like to do it is just, again, mess with the transparency. So if you bring that down to, you know, 50 or 60, it's going to soften against the background. It's going to pick up some of those greens. So naturally it becomes green as opposed to you having to fight the colors, which I think is nice. So just wrap it up here. You can kind of see where this is going already, but let's just grab again, kind of in the interest of time. One of these kind of pre-done texts and, you know, lean on, be lazy, lean on the built-in stuff. So you can see here as I'm dragging around, it immediately snaps and tells me where the center is. Just don't fight it. Like <laughs> work with the laziness. It really helps you line stuff up. So let's go ahead and make that uh, white for the text. And I kind of like that black there below. There we have it. Nicely done. As it, it's it's very subtle, the impact of it, right? You, you certainly could just have a, a plain color behind and then a plain colored square on top. You could just make the square on top plain color as well. And not even with the extra transparency, there's still some cool effects to have, but it, it's kind of nice to know what you're, you can do. And it becomes part of your arsenal when you're creating new designs. Oh, okay. I, I know that I can tweak this, play with this and add these minute details that really takes a design from okay to really great. So I hope that's been helpful. If you have any questions, ideas, or follow-ups for this, reach out to me on my Facebook page through my website or on Instagram at just enough design. And Hey, it's not that hard when you know the right tricks. So cheers to your next great looking work.